The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Grains, CNM Seeds, and Syngenta Canada. Find more episodes of The Wheat School by going to wheatschool.com. Hi, I'm Sean Haney with Real Agriculture. Today on The Wheat School, we're talking to Shad Milligan. He's with Syngenta. He's their seed care technical lead for Western Canada. We're going to start off by looking at what's exactly going into the decision making. Should I be treating my wheat or not? What are some of the factors that go into that decision? Let's hear what Shad has to say. Shad, there's still snow outside, but never too early to think about the things that we need to do to get that crop launched out of the ground. One of the things that you can do from a management perspective is is, is use seed treatment on, on a crop like wheat. Now, are there, are there, are there situations where we, we should or should not use a seed treatment? Or what? talk about that decision-making process. That's a great question. I'm just super happy to see snow still out there. So glad because that, that means moisture. And nine times out of 10, uh, you as a grower are gonna be seeding into moisture. Uh, whether that's cold soils, warm soils, depending on what time of uh, year you wanna start. Um, when you start to think about some of the boundaries we're pushing with seeding, uh, and what I've seen is that, you know, you need that protection. And, and really, the biggest thing is silliborne disease. Uh, that's one of, the, one of the factors that you need to be, protect that seed from. Uh, that, that seed becomes a food source. I think we tend to forget the seed's a living thing and we wanna take care of it. We need to nurture it. We need to get it out of the ground because that's, that's a big, it's a big thing. You need to get your crop established, get that first true leaf so it can grab the sun and start growing. But you know, once we stick it in the ground, it becomes a food source for some other things. So early season disease like Pythium, Fusarium, Rhizoctonia are all there to consume that seed. So I mean, partially, different environment factors actually favor each disease. So something like Pythium, you'll find in cold, wet soils. And again, I use that, you know, it may be the snow right now, but that's going to turn into to moisture. Uh, you know, we've got colder soils. And if you look at just the way farming practices have, it's really that no-till farming. It takes a while for that soil to warm up. So you do have that, that, that environment for something like Pythium uh, to cause damage to that seed. But if you look at the spectrum of the different soilborne diseases, when, what you have to grow through and what they like, something like Fusarium really likes warmer to uh, drier soils. And that's the same with Rhizoctonia, kind of that drier s soil profile. Uh, but that's what you get to as, as the spring wears on, as we move forward, that soil profile warms up, dries out. So it's just that really broad range of diseases that can affect your crop through different uh, uh, growing stages before it even gets out of the ground. So you really wanna protect that seed. The other side of this too is I, I, I strongly encourage any growers out there, it's use a lab and get a seed test done because the other part of this is seedborne disease. Uh, especially in the wheat side of things, something like Fusarium graninarium is a very, very uh, vicious disease and it can cause uh, you know, impact on your stand establishment uh, if not treated. So there, there are treatments out there that, that give you that protection, but at the end of the day, it, you have a gamut of different diseases that are affecting that crop. It becomes that food source. So we're trying to establish that. You want to get that crop out of the ground healthy to move on to the next stage of growth on that. So really, it all comes back to stand establishment and getting that stand establishment. Uh, but I do think there's a lot of growers that, you know, back in my early days or earlier career when I'm selling seed, I, I ran into a lot, a lot of people early in the season thinking, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to use a seed treatment. But as we get further on in the spring, things warm up a little bit, then it's like, I don't need to use it. Basically what you're saying is that may not, that may not be true actually. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great point. I've, I've run into it several different occasions and, 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 and I understand, you know, maybe it's an economic reason. Maybe it's, it's, you know, uh, I, I don't have time to do it, but at the end of the day, just because your soil warms up doesn't mean the soil borne diseases are going anywhere. It just favors different environmental conditions for those diseases that thrive in. So the later, what I would say is something like Rhizoctonia and Fusarium species in the soil, those are going to really start to get you as that soil warms up. Uh, Pythium, again, is really more, where it thrives is that cold, wet soils. 
But again, you're growing through these different stages and you have these different environmental conditions that are more conducive for these diseases that just because it's warming up, um, you know, the one thing with saying that though, your, your, your seed may get out of the ground a bit quicker, faster, because you've got the biology of the soil warming up. You've got that side of things uh, helping out. To, to grow out of that stage. To grow out of that stage. But as well is that coming out of the surface and uh, a lot of these diseases in soil, the trash on the soil actually is holding that disease inoculum as well because you actually have plants growing through that as well, which can be picked up and then that moves into this plant as well. So you, you mentioned seed testing. Are there some soil tests that I can do to figure out if I actually have some of these diseases inoculating in the soil? So great question. I think from a lab standpoint, uh, uh, I'm not exa exactly sure if they've got tests, but one thing that we were able to do from a Syngenta Sea Care perspective is that we worked with our pathologist of our Honeywood farm, and she had actually sent us out uh, bait, baits uh, to really quantify disease. Because that's a big thing, like how do you quantify soil-borne disease? Uh, is it present? Is it not there? How much of it is there? It's a, it's a harder thing to do, but what we were able to do and what I've seen firsthand is that uh, with the test tubes that we had set up, and had the, the agar that was a medium for, we had Pythium, Fusarium, and Rhizoctonia out there. And having those baits there, we're able to quantify, say, yeah, like we are finding Pythium species. And from that, we've actually worked, our pathologist, Ashley Dixon, has gone back and found a lot of different Pythium species uh, that we know we haven't seen out there as, as well as before. So uh, I think it's, it's one of these things uh, in the Western Canadian uh, as growers that there is going to be soil borne disease each year, uh, whether, whether or not the, the degree of the, it is really environmental conditions dependent on that. It's, it's been interesting on the evolution of seed treatments too, is that you know, some of the active, so some of the SDHI molecules that have been brought in for rhizoctonia control. Rhizoctonia was really something that, um, and I'm guilty of this, it was just thought to be a, a disease that caused uh, on, the, on the canola side of things and affected canola. Uh, with, ex with some uh, survey work uh, done by uh, Ted Laboon and our seed care uh, side of things uh, with the University of Guelph, we saw that actually Rhizoctonia was, you know, species affected all crops. It wasn't just, uh, wasn't just canola, you know, whether it was uh, wheat, lentils, uh, soybeans. Uh, but what we saw with new technologies coming to the marketplace, uh, especially the SDHIs, it really helped push back on that rhizoctonia and protect that plant. And what, and what we saw is just, again, better stand establishment. And that's what we're seeing really is, is that, you know, these seed treatments have really come a long ways uh, in, in a short period of time for that protection for the grower. So again, um, you're making that decision, you know, you may have had a, a, a great year, but at the end of the day, you don't know what the spring is going to bring you don't know what the rest of the year is going to bring. So if you don't set yourself up for success off the start from that stand establishment and really hit what that plant count is, you know, the rest of the year is going to just kind of uh, not be there for you. Yeah. Is there any economic modeling in terms of, you know, commodity prices have fallen. Um, some producers may be looking at uh, things from a cost perspective. Is there any modeling out there in terms of how to factor in this decision to where prices are, or does it really come down to what do you think spring's going to look like? Yeah, I, 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 I don't have the crystal ball for spring, uh, you, you, and, and that's every year. You don't know what it's going to look like, but to set yourself up for success, it's probably one of the, the less economic impactful decisions you can make in the business that has the greatest impact. Mm -hmm. And when I, what I mean by that is that relative to other farm, uh, in, uh, farm input expenses, uh, it's relatively a low cost for what you gain in return. Again, and I, I, I come back from stand establishment, every year you're trying to get that crop out of the ground. And I talked beforehand, those, like you're putting that living organism that seed into an environment where it's food for something else. So I, you want to protect it. You want to get it out of the ground. And, and, and with that, I mean, there's, there's different layers within the confines of the seed treatment world. You have, you know, and, and different uh, economic uh, returns with each. But at the end of the day, uh, really 
it's about setting that stand establishment up for success and that's the biggest goal what the seed treatments give you is that protection to give you that stand establishment. Shad, thanks for joining us here on The Weed School. Sean, thank you very much. Great to be here.